put snares on that fence. Yeah. And then they'll chase the caribou, say, off the mountain towards the snare, and they'll sing a song. It's like, my bad, daddy, auntie, a teen, daddy, auntie, a eager gin, da, take And you gotta make that voice. Then you go, eager gin, da, take And then they'll run towards that snare. I mean, everybody's done it traditionally wise, but nobody really knows about how we've done it. Right. You sing a song, a special song. change. It's not just industrial development with a highway running through and lots of access for backcountry recreation, technological advances and snow machines. These caribou are kind of feeling all that out and learning. So it'll be interesting to see how they cope with that. We started to hear from our elders that weather was starting to change so the caribou are going to start acting differently and now that's happening. The community has been expressing concerns about change in caribou behavior and there's a suspicion that it could be linked to global climate change. In Teltan we call caribou hoodzi and it's very important that we understand where the caribou are and how far they're going from our home. Lake. Today we're doing caribou capture and also adding collars. Alright, go ahead. And it's usually just the, the pilot and a net gunner, maybe one other person. You have to Keep the helicopter pretty light so it's maneuverable. And then we'll uh, position a group to where it's a safe place to catch them, where you know they're going uphill or they're in some deeper snow so they're not moving too fast because the last thing we want to do is hurt an animal. We'll get dropped off and untangle it from the neck as quick as we can and hobble it front and back legs together and get a blindfold on it. Yeah, caribou are. Uh, a pretty calm animal for the most part. I mean, they're they're fairly herd bound. And they come about they were just. They're interesting. They, you know, I've dealt mostly with caribou in the maternity pens, and their characters. You get to know them when they've got their, their whole personalities. But I kind of I think of them as more prehistoric ungulates in, in their behavior and, and how they act on an individual level. Once they're restrained, we'll take our rectal temperature just to make sure that they're not out of overheating and we've got time to process them. Uh, and then we'll collect a blood sample, some hair, some feces. Maybe a skin sample and we'll put a radio collar and an ear tag on it. And then we'll take the temperature again to make sure the animal's healthy and release them. It 
it's really quite a fast, low stress operation for the caribou. You know, it's usually only about a minute or so to chase it, and they're on the ground maybe 10 minutes, and then we, we let it go. And, yeah, they, they definitely do kind of have a personality, as you saw when we just released that one, you know, they just kind of give you a look back, okay, you know, Caribou are hugely important. They're an indicator of how the, the landscape is doing. More so than probably any other species here in the north, they need that large, expansive, intact habitat. You know, when your caribou aren't doing well, it means there's something not right on the land. I'm just happy to be a part of this project. It's proactive wildlife management. We're not waiting until there is a problem. We're getting the knowledge now and integrating traditional knowledge. It's a, a piece that's really been missing in this province, and it's good to see the Tolkien taking a leading role in it. <laughs> you don't get to do things like this very often, but the work's going to a good cause. Because this is bringing traditional and local knowledge into wildlife management. As a nation, we want to understand our caribou a little bit more. And this is going to determine what they're up to.